we finally have some resolve from the leads of Linux. A lot of people have been asking for some of the Linux leadership to step in and to address the Rust versus C Linux divide in the Linux kernel. We finally have seen the start of some guidance from Greg and Linus, and hopefully we see more as there hasn't been an official statement from Linus yet, but we will see some insights from Linus through another maintainer, so stick around to the end to hear about that one. First, we're going to get into what Greg Crow Hartman said, better known as Greg KH. For those of you unaware, Greg is considered a key Linux kernel developer who maintains critical kernel components and has created projects like UDev and the Linux hot plug. Greg KH is often considered the second in command when it comes to Linux and potentially the successor to Linus himself. He has also now made a statement from his point of view about using Rust in the kernel. This is Greg's response to the above, which is on the Linux lore website. I'll post a link in the description below, but I don't think that's the point of introducing a new language. The problem we are trying to resolve is when writing a driver or some Linux kernel component due to the complexity, memory safety issues and other issues are likely to happen. So using a language providing a type safety can help that replacing inlines and macros with neat template tricks is not the point, at least from what I can tell inlines and macros are not the main source of bugs or are they any source of bugs in production. Maybe you have an example. Now why it's important that Greg steps in is because we really haven't heard anything from some of the leadership quite yet after a few maintainers have all stepped down recently because of the hostility towards using Rust in the Linux kernel. So it's nice to finally see the thoughts of some of the main people leading Linux about Rust. Now let's get into this, a reply from Greg KH as someone who has seen almost every kernel bug fix and security issue for the past 15 plus years. Well, hopefully all of them end up in the stable trees. We do miss some at times when maintainers or developers forgot to mark them as bug fixes. And who sees every kernel CVE issued, I think I can speak on this topic. A majority of bugs, quantity, not quality or severity, we have are due to stupid little corner cases in C that are totally gone in Rust. Things like simple overwrites of memory, not that Rust can catch all of these by far, error path cleanups, forgetting to check error values, and use after free mistakes. That's why I'm wanting to see Rust get into the kernel. These types of issues just go away, allowing developers and maintainers more time to focus on the real bugs that happen, i.e. logic issues, race conditions, etc. And I believe it's important to highlight this specific paragraph because it seems like Greg believes that Rust does eliminate some of the pitfalls of C. And they seem to be talking about buffer overflows and memory corruption, null pointer, dereferences, forgetting to clean up error paths, accidentally writing past arrays, boundaries, all things that seemingly can be handled more easily, at least, than Rust. And it really matters for Linux as it is a critical component of an operating system. So reducing these types of crashes, security vulnerabilities, and just the maintenance overhead is widely important for Linux. So really this all underscores some of the motivation behind integrating Rust into the kernel. And it seems like Greg is behind the fact that Rust should be integrated. Anyways, continuing on, I'm, I'm all for moving our C code base towards making these types of problems impossible to hit. The work that Keys and Gustavo and others are doing here is wonderful and totally needed. We have 30 million lines of C code that isn't going anywhere any year soon. That's a worthy effort as it's not going to stop and should not stop no matter what. Another important statement, as Greg seemingly believes that the effort to port things over to Rust should not stop no matter what. And as potentially the successor to Linus, this definitely draws a lot of weight as we can see what the future of Linux may look like. But for new code or drivers, writing them in Rust where these types of bugs just can't happen or happen much less is a win for all of us why wouldn't we do this? C++ isn't going to give us any of that any decade soon. And the C++ language committee issues seem to be pointing out that everyone better be abandoning that language as soon as possible if they wish to have any code base that can be maintained for any length of time. Quite some shade being thrown <laughs> towards C++ in my opinion anyways. Rust also gives us the ability to define our internal APIs in ways that make them almost impossible to get wrong when using them. We have a way too many difficult, tricky APIs that require way too much maintainer review just to ensure that you got this right. That is a combination 
of both how our APIs have evolved over the years, how many different ways can you use struct cdev in a safe way, and how C doesn't allow us to express APIs in a way that makes them easier or safer to use. Forcing us maintainers of these APIs to rethink them is a good thing, as it is causing us to clean them up for everyone, C users included already, making Linux better overall. A big statement to make, thinking that this newly adopted language, Rust, is helping make everything safer and easier for use when it comes to everyone, including the C devs. And yes, the Rust bindings look like magic to me in places, some one with very little Rust experience, but I'm willing to learn and work with the developers who have stepped up to help out here. To not want to learn and change based on new evidence, see my point about reading every kernel bug we have, Rust isn't a silver bullet that will solve all of our problems, but it sure will help in a huge number of places. So for new stuff going forward, why wouldn't we want that? A great question, as we've noticed from a previous video that I covered, a maintainer stepped down recently because Christoph, a maintainer, was highly opposed to adding any sort of code, albeit we were focusing on Rust. They didn't really care what type of code was added. They didn't want anything else besides C code. And that caused a lot of drama because Rust maintainers who were trying to work with them were trying to figure out why they didn't want the code and taking it as a hostile comment, all causing one maintainer to step down, which was the leader of the Acai Linux. And that leads on to Linux is a tool that everyone else uses to solve their problems. And here we have developers that are saying, hey, our problem is that we want to write the code for our hardware that just can't have all of these types of bugs automatically. Why would we ignore that? Yes, I understand our overworked maintainer problem being one of these people myself, but here we have people potentially doing the work, which again is another interesting statement as it is important to see the Rust adoption, and I believe this is what Greg is trying to say here, as a long-term maintainability improvement, aka with modern languages and people moving on from languages like C, C++, and so on and so forth, newer developers are easier to onboard and reduces technical depth because we can't be silly and just expect people to always write in C, even though that there's languages being adopted, including Zig and Rust. As more modern solutions and languages keep coming into play, there's going to be less and less people actually programming in other languages like C and C++. This is about future proofing and explains some of the motivation of introducing newer developers in a new language into something like the Linux kernel. Speaking about introducing new people, make sure to smash that like button for me so we can get more people in to see threads like this. Also, don't forget to subscribe below for more Linux and programming content. YouTube can get finicky and not send these videos out. You wouldn't want to miss the next one. Let's continue on. Yes, mixed language code bases are rough and hard to maintain, but we are kernel developers, damn it. We've been maintaining and strengthening Linux for longer than anyone ever thought was going to be possible. We've turned our development model into a well-oiled engineering marvel, creating something that no one else has ever been able to accomplish. Adding another language really shouldn't be a problem. We've handled much worse things in the past, and we shouldn't give up now on wanting to ensure that our project succeeds for the next 20 plus years. We've got to keep pushing forward when confronted with new good ideas and embrace the people offering to join us in actually doing the work to help make sure that we all succeed together. Thanks. Signed off, Greg KH. And this paragraph here is particularly important for the long-term viability of Linux. The mention here by Greg is that Linux has been evolving over the last 30 years anyway. So for the next 20 years, we need to adopt modern development practices. Embracing other languages ensures new generations of developers can contribute without being forced to master C. Although historically, mixed language code bases does make things challenges, including interoperability, tooling, maintainability, and other problems, it seems like the embracing of new ideas and innovation here will help continue to push Linux forward, which of course is crucial for Linux's future. It really seems to be a call to action for the Linux community to embrace this change and reconsider Rust as a valuable tool for the decades to come. A seemingly strong statement by Greg here, and I can say for a lot of community members, hearing these insights from Greg Crow Hartman on Rust is a little refreshing as they are a key figure in the Linux community. 
His endorsement here, at least willingness, indicates how real the Rust in the Kernel effort is while acknowledging the tough challenges that Linux will have to overcome by having multiple code bases, Greg seems to think that it's an important practice to undertake to have long-term viability. Now we're going to move on to some opinions by Linus. At least these were shared in private with Christoph, the original DMA maintainer who did not want anything to do with Rust code in the DMA. This is because they're a particularly large advocate of keeping multiple code bases out of the kernel. Christoph has mentioned they would not want any other language in the kernel they want to maintain only one, which is actually what set off the last set of drama between the lead developer of the Acai Linux team and led to them ultimately stepping down, named Hector. So again, this is going to be a brief conversation that was reportedly said in private with Christoph. This starts out with Miguel saying, Hi all, given the discussions in the last days, I've decided to publish this page with what our understanding is. And they link a Rust kernel policy. Here's what that looks like. And it's for the Rust for Linux project, going through some of the confusion around Rust in the kernel, including things like how it was introduced, which maintainers support Rust in the kernel, who maintains the Rust code, so on and so forth. Really just a way for Miguel to try to get their thoughts around how Rust belongs, especially after the recent events of Rust maintainers stepping down. This was carbon copy to Linus, Torvalds and Greg KH. To finish things off, I hope it helps to clarify things. I intend to keep it updated as needed. And here's a response from Christoph, who was the one to set off the last set of drama, saying that they didn't want Rust in the DMA. He says, I don't think having a web page in any form is useful. If you want it to be valid, it has to be in the kernel tree and widely agreed upon. It also states factually incorrect information, e.g., some subsystems may decide they do not want to have Rust code for the time being, typically for bandwidth reasons, this is fine and expected. And now we mention what Linus said. While Linus in private said that he absolutely is going to merge Rust code over a maintainer's objection. He did so in private in case you are looking for a reference. Okay, this one is very important as this objection more than likely came from Christoph himself and was told in private by Linus that this objection is invalid. And ultimately, the choice is going to be made by Linus himself to merge Rust code over the maintainer's objection. We finally get some resolve here as Linus is letting the person know who started the objections that they really have no say over it. And Kristoff continues by saying, so as of now, a Linux developer or maintainer, you must deal with the Rust if you want it or not. Going against what Kristoff originally said and their argument for not actually having Rust and multiple code bases in the Linux kernel. It doesn't seem like Linus cares for the argument and is going to continue merging code from Rust into the Linux kernel, regardless of what other people think. Now, Kristoff definitely has their strong opinions. We can read through this here because they have an important viewpoint on all of this, even though Linus is going to continue merging the Rust code. And then we're gonna talk about the overall community sentiment on this. So we'll have these bindings creep everywhere like a cancer and are very quickly moving from a software project that allows for and strives for global changes that improve the overall project to increasing compartmentalization. This turns Linux into a project written in multiple languages with no clear guidelines what language is going to be used for where. Even outside the bindings, a lot of code isn't going to be very idiomatic. Rust due to the Linux data structures, that intrusive and self-referencing data structures like the ambiguous linked lists. Aren't we doing so a disservice both to trying to bring the existing code base into a better, safer space and people doing systems programming in Rust. Having worked on a code base like that, they are my worst nightmare because it is a constant churn of rewriting parts of language A to language B because of the reason X and back because of the reason Z. And that is without the usual creative Linux process of infighting maintainers. Christoph explains their views a little better here. If you introduce any language and have multiple code bases, that you get in this round robin type of situation where you keep coming up with reasons to go between the two languages and ultimately create infighting between the maintainers. A solid take on it, but clearly one that Linus and Greg do not share. I'd like to understand what the goal of this Rust experiment is. If we want to fix existing issues with memory safety, we need to do that for existing code and find ways to retrofit it. A lot of work went into that recently and we need much more. 
but that also shows how core maintainers are put off by trivial things like checking for integer overflows or compiler enforced synchronization, as in the Clang thread sanitizer. How are we going to bridge the gap between a part of the Linux kernel that is not even accepting relatively easy rules for improving safety versus another one that enforces even strong rules. If we want to make writing drivers easier, a new language for that pushes even more work and increases the workload on already overworked people keeping the core infrastructure in shape. So I don't think this policy document is very useful. Right now the rules are Linus can force you whatever he wants. It's his project, obviously, and I think he needs to spell that out including the expectations for contributors very clearly. For myself, I can and do deal with Rust itself fine. I'd love bringing the kernel into a more memory safe world, but dealing with an uncontrollable multi-language code base is pretty sure way to get me to spend my spare time on something else. I've heard a few other folks mumble something similar, but not everyone is quite as outspoken. And then three notes here. I've written and worked on a fair bit of user space Rust code, but I'm not an expert by any means. So take this with a grain of salt too. The idea of drivers in, in eBPF are done by HID. Also really doesn't help with that as much as I'd like eBPF for some use cases. And three, unless Linus forces it into our subsystem or Dave decides anything touching NVIDIA hardware must be in Rust, of course. All right, a lot from Christoph here as they clearly don't support multi-code projects, which is a fine opinion to have, but clearly they're being superseded by Linus and Greg. They definitely bring some valid concerns to the table here and is ready to get some guidance from Linus. It's nice to finally see that there are some private talks going on in the background about how we're going to approach some of this C and Rust Linux divide. And I'm hoping to see a more official statement from Linus here in the coming weeks. I'll be definitely following this through. I do want to talk about the overall community sentiment for a brief moment. There is quite a debate going on the merits of integrating Rust into the Linux kernel. On one side, some users argue that Rust could drastically reduce the kind of memory safety bugs that are an issue with C, ultimately leading to a safer and more maintainable code base while including new drivers and features. This is seen by the side as a evolution in Linux, especially with the aging pool of experienced C programmers so that Linux can get new developers but that also comes with friction. As the opposite side believes that both Linus and Greg are being overly optimistic and even biased, ignoring things like the dual code maintenance challenges, potential performance issues, including longer compile times and friction with bindings to sync with evolving C code, which ultimately people believe will lead to fragmentation. In summary, there's a huge split between Rust and C proponents let me know which side you fall on in the comments section below. I'm interested to hear, and I'll keep following through with more videos about Rust and C in Linux. So you wouldn't want to miss another video. Make sure to subscribe below if you haven't already. Thanks for sticking around. You're a true fan. Make sure to smash that like button for me if you haven't already. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another one. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.